Good morning. The Cathedral of Our Lady of Victory welcomes all who enter our holy doors. As we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent, the song parts of the Mass can be found on the laminated sheets provided in the missalette wax. Our processional hymn can be found in the missalette, number 233, Out of the Depths, number 233. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. 
then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and have you rise from them, O oh my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. If you A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to him saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Ju Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the lights of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. He said, he said this and then told them, our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death while they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, he went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to, had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel of John is dramatically different than the Synoptic Gospels, the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John gives us fewer stories than the other Gospels, but those that he does present are rich in detail. In his Gospel, there are seven signs and seven I am sayings. In today's gospel, read for the third scrutiny of our elect, we hear the seventh sign that is recorded, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. And also included is one of the I am sayings. I am the resurrection and the life. Like all of Jesus' miracles, they are not just meant for that particular person, but to instill in us the truths of who he is and what he promises to us. This is why he told his followers, I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. He prepared his followers. He prepared those who had not yet come to believe. And he is preparing us today to accept the greatest mystery of our faith, that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, that he gives us eternal life, that if we are buried with him in the death of baptism, we will rise with him in the resurrection. Dear elect, this is the promise 
that you are preparing to receive at the Easter Vigil. Our hope in the resurrection is something we renew with you as we all together prepare to enter to, into the passion of our Lord and then be able to celebrate with true faith and belief the resurrection of Jesus and the resurrection that he offers to all of us. I now invite the elect, Tanner Cavazos, Molly Duke, Kate Haas, Danielle Kilsher, and Mark Olguin to come forward with their sponsors. Today, the church calls the elect to conversion, to deepen their resolve, to hold fast to Christ, and to carry out the decision to love God above all. Let us all kneel and in silence pray at this time for them. We pray that they be given a spirit of repentance, a sense of sin, and strength of will to live in true freedom as children of God. And so now we bow our heads and pray. Let us stand. <clears throat> My dear elect, I invite you to join your prayers to this community of faith as we intercede to God on your behalf. Let us pray for these elect whom God has called that they remain faithful to him and boldly give witness to the words of eternal life. That these elect may be given the faith to acknowledge Christ as the resurrection and the life. We pray to the Lord. to material possessions and greed and learn to appreciate what they have. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Deliver them from the bondage of sin and help them grow to Help them grow in the strength that God gives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may grow in a loving and trusting relationship with God and continue to love their families and give good example to their children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they have faith that God strengthens them in facing difficult losses in life. And remember that good things can come out of the bad. 
Father of life and God, not of the dead, but of the living, you sent your Son to proclaim life, to snatch us from the realm of death and lead us to the resurrection. Free these elect from the death-dealing power of the spirit of evil, that they may bear witness to their new life in the risen Christ, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. I invite you to extend your hands as we continue to pray over these elect. Lord Jesus, by raising Lazarus from the dead, you showed that you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Free from the grasp of death those who await your life-giving sacraments and deliver them from the spirit of corruption. Through your spirit who gives life, Fill them with faith, hope, and charity, that they may live with you always in the glory of your resurrection. For you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. I now invite the candidates to come forward. My dear friends, today the Lord Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead and instructed those around them to untie him and let him go free. Today's great miracle is this. The Lord releases you from the bondage of sin and promises resurrection and new life to all who believe. As your belief in the Lord strengthens and grows, be assured of our loving support and prayers. We eagerly await the day when you will share with us at the table of the Eucharist. Go now in peace.
And now we continue as together we profess our faith. I believe in one God. And now we continue as we bring our gifts to the altar. Our hymn and presentation of the gifts are number 207, From Ashes to the Living Fund, and 217, Jesus Walked This Lonesome Valley.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as eternal God, raised him up from the tomb, just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Brendan, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, so they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, we, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, <laughs> Our communion hymn will be number 257, I Am the Bread of Life, number 257.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. A recessional hymn is 218, Awake, O Sleeper, number 218.